Today, we have an extraordinary scientific knowledge and data on the state of the earth. Every day, new scientific reports are published warning us that the climate system is destabilized, that the biosphere, the loss of biodiversity is alarming, and also that the chemical pollution is damaging our health, any kind of pollution. Science is one of the key factors that leads the action of the international community to respond to global environmental challenges. And the response of the international community is built upon law. As law is the tool par excellence to organize societies. In the last 50 years, even before the Stockholm Conference, conventions, treaties, declarations, plans of actions have been adopted to protect our planet. But it seems that we haven't found the appropriate solution yet. And I believe that this is because the legal system is disregarding the scientific knowledge that we have today on the functioning of the earth. Our planet, the earth, is the common home to all forms of life. And this is possible because of the functioning interactions of the planet's physical, chemical, and biological processes known as the earth system. The simplest way to understand the earth system is that it is comprised of a he very heavily interactive system. It's comprised of two components, which is the biosphere, which is the living part, and the geosphere, which is the physico-chemical part, comprised of the climate system, the hydrological cycle, and the atmosphere. Interestingly, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change adopted in Rio de Janeiro in 1982 was adopted to protect, and this is the main aim of this convention, to protect the climate system. And this convention defines the climate system as the totality of the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the geosphere. The Earth system composed or created by these processes is a, a single and integrated system whose conditions are in, under increasing instability. So to provide a stability on to keep the Earth system under stable conditions, the planetary boundaries framework was designed by a group of scientists. This framework identifies nine key processes that jointly describe the functioning of the Earth system. Among these um, processes are the climate change or the uh, change in biosphere integrity, the stratosphere ozone depletion, land use, land system change, or chemical pollution, novel entities, or freshwater use, many others. And we must keep the earth system functioning. For this, under stable conditions, we shouldn't trespass the boundaries, the planetary boundaries, to keep the earth system under a stable condition, which is under the Holocene state that has allowed humans or the humankind to flourish. The Holocene is the only state of the Earth system that with certainty allows or is able to maintain and to sustain our complex contemporary societies. However, as the scientists have already told us, we have 
surpass, trespass, transgress these boundaries, the safety boundaries that has been called the safe operating space. Therefore, with this information, it's imperative to act. And law plays a key role establishing the rules for the coexistence, coexistence among humans and between, between humans and the Earth system. In fact, we already have, and some of the processes of the Earth system enjoy legal protection. We have conventions and we have, for example, UN General Assembly declarations or resolutions providing uh, the Agenda 2030 framework with the SDGs. Such is the case, for example, how it is protected. We have for climate change, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and also the Paris Agreement. For the protection of the change in the biosphere integrity, we have the Biodiversity Convention also signed in Rio. In addition to many other conventions, that protects habitats and species, like for example, the Ramsar Convention that protects wetlands, or for example, the migratory, uh, uh, the, the migratory Species Convention. We also have, for example, the convention, the Olson Convention or the Vienna Convention, and it's uh, signed in 1985 for the protection of the ozone layer, which is another of the processes, and its protocol, its Montreal Protocol, on substances that deplete the ozone layer. So all these conventions are paramount for keeping our Earth system under a safe operating space. But of course, if well implemented, and one case is the case of the Vienna Convention and of the uh, Montreal Protocol, because in fact, last week, the scientist community presented another scientific paper on the uh, Earth uh, system boundaries, and this planetary boundary, the one related to ozone layer, the destruction of the ozone layer, depletion, has been, um, in a sense, withdrawn from this framework, because it has been uh, an example of success. So we have these conventions, but however, we have principles of international law that represent an obstacle for the protection of the earth system. And they apply to all the relations among states. I'm referring basically to two principles. This is the principle of sovereignty and the principle of permanent sovereignty over natural resources. And these principles are very present in the negotiations of these conventions and also in the implementation of these conventions. And it's affecting the protection of the earth system. So what I do propose to solve these hurdles or to face, to give kind of solutions. First, sovereignty is a fundamental principle of international law but it is very often used in a political sense with differing interpretations depending on context and intention. In fact, the understanding of sovereignty is absolute, it's an absolute concept. And it is interpreted as it is, if it's granted a license to act with total freedom within the territorial dimension of sovereignty. The Earth system is not under the domain of any state. For example, if we think about the photosynthesis, but at the same time, there are elements that are very important and are essential for the processes of the Earth system that are under sovereignty of states, as we will see now. Uh, thus, under international law, states have full competence to develop laws and policies referring to its environment and natural resources that are found over its land within its borders or 
the internal waters as river canals and uh, lakes or the territorial sea adjacent to the coast and its uh, seabed and subsoil and also the uh, atmosphere sorry the uh, the air space which is above the land the internal waters and the territorial sea so these elements plays a very important role in photosynthesis in addition uh, there are the states do not have full sovereignty and has limited sovereignty over certain resources which are its uh, continental shelf and its resources and the seabed and subsoil of the continental shelf for example also the contiguous zone adjacent to the territorial sea and the exclusive economic zone there are also some areas that are beyond the territories of states and they don't exercise sovereignty over them which are known as the global commons and these are the high seas and its seabed and subsoil or the atmosphere or the outer space so all these dividing lines dividing territories are totally incoherent with the interlinkages and interdependence of the functioning of the earth system of its components and of its processes but we cannot ignore that activities within the sovereignty of states or under the control of states interfere or affect the stability of the earth system which requires a robot's functioning and in integration of all its components and processes uh, as an evolution of the principle of sovereignty the principle of permanent sovereignty over natural resources was a leading theme during the decolonization process and the construction of the new international economic order and when the western colonization collapsed in the post-1945 era one of the most immediate tasks uh, of newly independent states and confronting them was to re regain control over their natural resources in uh, 1974 a un general assembly resolution adopted the charter of economic rights and duties of states which proclaims that every state has and shall freely exercise permanent sovereignty including possession use and disposal over all its wealth natural resources and economic activities so this is how it's built the international system and given the although there is this political understanding of the concept of sovereignty and permanent sovereignty over natural resources today in the 21st century under international law sovereignty has to be exercised and requires to respect the sovereignty of other states and international law and also obliged to cooperate in good faith so there is some limits to sovereignty and to this principle of permanent sovereignty over natural resources in fact even two years before the adoption of the charter of the, the of economic rights and duties of states during the stockholm uh, meeting uh, in 1972 the un conference on human environment adopted the declaration and it contains principle 21 that recognize the principle of permanent sovereignty over natural resources of states but at the same time it limits the sovereignty of states imposing them a duty to ensure that activities within their jurisdiction or control do not cause damage to the environment of other states or beyond areas of the limits of national jurisdiction this principle was also integrated in the uh, rio declaration but also in international law we have another principle which is the principle of prevention 
that oblige states to prevent damage inside their territories. So what are my solutions to these two hazards? First, I believe that today under international law, states have no right to interfere in the functioning of the earth system in such a manner that disrupt the functioning and all its processes in such a manner that it disrupts. And also I think that for this limitation of sovereignty and for a better understanding of sovereignty today is very important, a recognition of the earth system. We need to recognize in the legal system because it's totally ignored the earth system, although the scientific community has told us about. So I propose that a, the United Nations General Assembly adopts a resolution including a definition of the earth system and also a recognition that is a single and integrated system. And because its nature and its characteristic is global, it's a global system and common to all states. I think that if we reach this, we will be able to have a better understanding of sovereignty vis-a-vis -vis the earth system. And at the same time, it will be an answer to the fragmented approach that we have today under the conventions that protect the different processes of the earth system. Thank you. <laughs>